And welcome everybody into the Oklahoma's video studio. Time for our monthly chat with this lady right here, Tava Sowski from the mm -hmm. Oklahoma Film and Music Office to learn about all things film and music happening around the state. Mm -hmm. We have guests this week, Tava. We have Blake Parks, our musical guest here. He's gonna tell us about a show that's coming up this very week this very album to talk about and this gentleman right over here Russ Kirkpatrick he has an event coming up next week that he will be at how to start a film production company that doesn't sound easy it's difficult <laughs> gentlemen welcome in thank you thank you Dave uh, we're gonna get to you in just a second because there's as you will notice something to chat about <laughs> but first Taba as always uh, last time we spoke uh, we were talking about I can only imagine and the songwriters festival so mm -hmm. let's recap those two real fast yeah, yeah. So uh, a couple weekends ago, um, we uh, experienced the Oklahoma Songwriters Festival, which was in Oklahoma City. And that was the founder of the festival, Zach Malloy, and he brought three Nashville songwriters. Well, actually one from Texas, um, who's with the band called Bowling for Soup, which uh, Jarrett was a... Um, a huge um, fun part of the the whole weekend but so he brings a little bit of Nashville here and works for three days working with Oklahoma songwriters in writing workshops during the day and then in the evening he's you know he's networking um, we uh, partnered and hosted their uh, day of panels on Saturday at the Tower Theater so it was a very engaged group of eager aspiring um, and already some seasoned songwriters that we saw there and they got to just ask questions it was a very kind of informal you know just asking um, whatever questions they wanted to know about the bu music business or you know how do you write a hit song or whatever so getting to hear from songwriters established songwriter writers like Bob DePiro who wrote um, American Made and wrote um, Blue Clear Skies, which I always want to get it backwards, but by George Strait. I mean, he has 15 number one hits. Um, and then the other lineup was just incredible. And to have that kind of talent come here and just sort of stop everything else they're doing and work with some locals. They also gave five Oklahoma artists an opportunity to open their main showcase at Tower Theater on um, that Saturday night, which was phenomenal. We're so proud of our Oklahoma artists, um, just phenomenal. So you can get a recap on that too if you go to our news feed on our website um, and look out for the next one. Um, that was year three and it just keeps getting better and bigger and, and stronger and our artists are just getting more um, wisdom and that's what it's all about, so sort of sharing our secrets um, and getting exposure for them and it was really, it was really a great um, a great weekend. So A lot of talent in this market such as mm -hmm. Mr. Blake Parks when we're talking music mm -hmm. uh, but also a lot of talent nationally that are that is are they're from here. Yeah yeah I mean Zach Bean is from here obviously but um, but wanted to bring a little bit something back and, and, and again just kind of help stir what what's already going on <laughs> here I mean it's not any surprise if it is you're not <laughs> paying, attention not paying attention that the musical talent springing out of Oklahoma and has for decades um, you know, is just phenomenal, and we're just yeah couldn't be prouder as a state to to do uh, play a small role in supporting you know the growth of that and um, sort of um, you know and bringing national attention to our music industry here. Speaking of national attention, I can only imagine big numbers. Yeah, it just keeps uh, climbing. Uh, it's still in theaters. It's only it's been in theaters 45 days, and it has grossed 81 million dollars, and it's still climbing. I, I look every couple days and we're, we're going to have, we're going to let some fireworks off when it hits a hundred. Oh, I just saw fireworks. Thank you, Paige. <laughs> In the movie, I can only imagine. That was perfect timing. Um, seriously, like we're going to celebrate because, um, I mean, not only did that film spend, you know, couple hundred days here like employing our talent and 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 um, supporting businesses here um, they had like 80 <coughs> percent crew local crew that they hired on that um, not only did it help sort of economically like on a you know um, a, a short stint um, basis but it now it's still growing and still bringing that national attention to our state um, if you read anything about the movie, the critics are saying it's like visual postcards. Oklahoma looks absolutely beautiful. It's a solid story. We've talked a lot about it, but um, we, and we have so so many other films that are made entirely in Oklahoma that are are reaching you know reaching around the world. We have one that actually utilized the rebate program that is at Cannes Film Festival. We can't talk about it yet. Um, Come but on, Tava. after <laughs> Every month you're like, yeah, I can't talk about it. Once it premieres, we're trying to creatively figure out how to, you know, like 
you know, advertise there and, and say it was filmed here because we want to always point people back to the state. That's really and that's cool. the whole point with the movie, of course, I can only imagine. Um, and the successes from that too um, is is cool on a, a very local level. So the day after we hosted a private screening for this particular film for some legislators and some other community members, um, Representative McDaniel found a vehicle, um, Representative um, D uh, D Jordan, to, um, to declare that song our state inspirational song. So those two representatives really had a big play as, as many other um, legislators to and, and their leaders at the Capitol to declare that. And so we're going to also um, present the actual bill to the band when they perform on June 9th at Frontier City. Um, so that'll be really cool to give that to Mercy Me and just say thanks, you know, because they did get their, their start in Oklahoma. And Bart Miller, the front man, he'll say, you know, we got our start in 94 in Edmond, Oklahoma. And for him to have, to be touring around this, you know, the, the, the nation, um, and and talk about the 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 love that Oklahoma gave him and the support is pretty phenomenal. So we're proud of that, and all of our other films that are that are actively getting out there in the world through different festivals and and so forth. So yeah, such as in France, such as in France. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still not going to give it up. But in uh, upcoming episodes, <laughs> I'm sure we will be catching up and talking about mm -hmm. those very films. Yeah. All right, so that gets us caught up. And by the way, if you haven't signed up for the monthly newsletter, uh, be sure to go on their website. It's full of uh, all sorts of good information, including next week's uh, film production, uh, sit-down networking mentoring series, and this at the Gypsy Cafe coming up this week. I'll deal in uh, Blake Parks uh, real fast, and Russ Karpashi for that matter. Behind us, you may not uh, see it right now, but throughout this interview, you will see people in jackets walking by because the state FFA convention is in downtown Oklahoma City. Were you gentlemen <laughs> ever in FFA? I wasn't. I, I had horses and dogs and a raccoon and chickens, but I was not <laughs> in FFA. <laughs> Russ, I had, a lot of I had many animals, but no, I was not in FFA. <laughs> Did you have a raccoon? <laughs> I did not. Okay. A <laughs> raccoon, really? Yeah, his name was Patch, which I kind of have a patch to Oh, there it is. Oh. There's the segue. Oh. There you go. So, uh, we so have, I we guess have to I'll ask. go ahead and unveil um, on this side of my face. I've got the good side to you guys. <laughs> but <laughs> over the weekend, I was having a, we call it, I guess, combat ping pong. And so we, we played doubles where two people are on each side of the ping pong table. And my friend whacked me with the ping pong paddle. And it, it uh, went Yikes. pretty hard where I actually had to get some, some stitches. stitches oh, so, yeah. And that's <laughs> and that's like in an area that bleeds. It did. Yeah. It, it bled mm -hmm. pretty well. And it was accidental? It was, yeah. <laughs> are, we sure, are we sure about this? Yeah. He owes me now because I was like, I got to be on TV. <laughs> that's awesome. So. Uh, Comeback ping pong. Is this a <laughs> sanctioned event or is this just a tradition? <laughs> it's, you know, it's a new tradition. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We should mention that Blake Parks, uh, musician, uh, I imagine you play multiple instruments, but uh, violin? My main instrument is fiddle okay. and, and sing and, and songwrite. Okay, singing and songwriting, he's in the band Still Wind, and uh, you have the newest album right here? Yes, our, our album F5, it's very fitting for this time of year with, mm -hmm. um, with us in a tornado shelter on the cover there. Um, but our single is F5 on there, and uh, we're actually in the studio right now with 33rd Street Studios in Edmond with Tyler Garcia. Okay. We're working on our new album that will be coming out this year, early fall, um, and <coughs> we're very excited. We, we actually have a song on there called Oklahoma Wind, um, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. and we've got a, mm -hmm. a lot of great new songs, and um, so we're really looking forward to that. We are really the kind of the only Oklahoma bluegrass band that writes our own songs and and uh, kind of has that that niche, but um, we also are big supporters of the Red Dirt music scene, and um, we we play a lot of different events around Oklahoma. For example, um, tomorrow on May 2nd, we're playing at the Bob Childers Gypsy Cafe in Stillwater, okay. um, and I'm actually on the board of directors for the Red Dirt Relief Fund. Um, so the Red Dirt Relief Fund is a basically a safety net for Oklahoma musicians when. Um, you know, many of them don't have insurance or, you know, a tornado hits their house and so it's a way for the music community in Oklahoma to really help each other out in times of need. Um, so it's a great assistance program called the Red Dirt Relief Fund. 
um, and it's a great fundraiser uh, to help Oklahoma musicians. So that will be May 2nd um, tomorrow in Stillwater and there's three different stages uh, with the weather the stage is actually going to be moved inside Eskimo Joe's. Yeah, good thinking. And mm -hmm. then it will be at George's Stables. Steelwind plays at 6 o'clock and then uh, the Stonewall in Stillwater is the other other stage. Um, but so, so many great musicians. Randy Crouch, Stoney LaRue, mm -hmm. uh, Caitlin Butts, um, we've got Susan Buffalo Mike Rogers, we've got Hostie Duo, um, just a great family of songwriters and it really is a lot of Oklahoma songwriters coming together and they pair them up where two musicians will, two songwriters will play together and it's very organic and kind of, you know, it's kind of cool you never know what happens. <laughs> it's kind of cool to see the magic like that when two right. musicians who may be in opposite genres but emerge as well. Right, right. Yeah, it's very cool. So, uh, so the Gypsy Cafe, that is Wednesday, as he mentioned, May 2nd, up in uh, Stillwater. Um, you saw a clip there a second ago from a music video called Hazel. Yeah. Yeah, so we um, we got to film that in front of a beautiful Oklahoma sunset. Mm. and That's well done. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and that's awesome. Also, we, there's a lot of musicians in one shot right there. <laughs> yeah. I want to be the there. The bluegrass style is all about <laughs> coming together around one microphone um, so we can really sing the tight harmonies. And, gotcha. um, you know, we, we're we all acoustic, so we all can kind of play in one mic. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I think it, it's just fun to add a whole energy to to the performance when you're around one mic. Um, but we, uh, mm. yeah, we love that. We should also mention uh, you're currently assisting Grand Casino's uh, Play It Loud musical initiative. Yes, so the Grand Casino is doing, they have amazing acts that come through all year, but they also want to show their support to the local Oklahoma scene. So they are doing a music series where they're featuring four Oklahoma artists, um, one in April, which TJ Mays just released, and you can go to <coughs> playitloudshow.com and watch the first episode. And he is kind of a 50s rockabilly uh, style with a modern twist. So he really has a cool vibe, and he is a um, Oklahoma songwriter that is kind of up in the come up and coming so definitely check out TJ Mays at playitloudshow.com the production it's like such yes. great production value tell us about like I mean so like explain like if I don't know anything about play it loud like what is it yeah so Ryan with Outsiders production is part of the the production team and Chad Matthews is the director at the Grand Casino um, and they really wanted to do this in like a like a film theatrical way uh, to where it's not just a you know generic interview it's really a really well done to where they could possibly even enter it for a film festival um, so they've they've uh, really put a twist on um, going back into their hometown in Oklahoma and getting their roots and then performing on the main stage at the Grand Casino with a grand finale concert August 25th um, that will bring all four artists together and um, that show will actually benefit the Red Dirt Relief Fund. Oh, cool. So it all kind of ties together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Russ Kirkpatrick with uh, Kirkpatrick and Kinslow <laughs> Productions. When you're seeing those clips, I'm, I'm guessing you're th seeing the same thing I am. Hey, that's good. That's good color grading. That's good uh, composition. You can't help but when you see this, <laughs> start to dissect things, right? Sure. Uh, I, it, it's a great time to be in the film business mm -hmm. in Oklahoma. There's no question about that. We've got great musicians. Uh, the film production, you know, the values you're talking about. Uh, you know, the cinematographers, the directors, the crew, it's incredible from Tulsa mm -hmm. to Oklahoma City. So whenever you do have the opportunity to see something like that, uh, it is, um, it's encouraging. I said earlier that it's difficult, you know, getting into the film production business, but it's a blast. You know, some days we have to wake up and think, are we really making movies? Mm -hmm. You know, and we are in Oklahoma. Um, you were mentioning earlier, uh, Tava, the uh, movie that is seeing success right now, whether it's August Osage County or something you know relevant right now, when those numbers get to a certain point, that's extremely exciting because what that tells, you know, uh, tourism officials from our perspective, film production officials uh, from Hollywood who we visit every year at the American Film Market, 
uh, others at the Sundance Film Market, that Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Guthrie, Bartlesville, Duncan, Oklahoma, you know, they are these places where you can come and really set up a cottage industry and create. Uh, and that's all really, really important. Not the least, uh, the uh, one of the key important things is having uh, qualified people uh, in in all sectors of the state. And so, uh, from from our side of things, um, you know, we're a film production company that's been around for uh, about five years. Uh, we're small. Uh, we live in the uh, independent world, so we're at about five million dollars or less. And uh, we're excited that any success that we've had, but it all correlates uh, to what goes on within the ecosystem uh, in Oklahoma. Whether it's the Oklahoman, I didn't bring a uh, prop, so I'll just <laughs> have the prop here. Bless you, you know. Russ. <laughs> yeah. well, this, is, this is paper for anyone who doesn't know what this is. Uh, but really, the ecosystem that exists here, because you're promoting film, you're promoting music, places like OETA, independent film theaters, national theater, uh, distribution centers, it's all part of who we are. And it's just, again, a, a fabulous time to be in film in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. yes. You're participating in How to Start a mm -hmm. Film Production Company. It's <clears> part of the Free Film uh, Networking and Mentoring Series. Uh, it is May 8th, so that's a week from now over at the Paramount Room. And what will you be telling people? So what I will be telling people is, uh, if you're starting a film production company, don't stop your day job. <laughs> Just, you know, it takes a lot of work. It really is, Tavis, starting business. Dave, it's no different than you know, starting a widget shop. Uh, it just takes a lot of work and focus. You have to put together a business plan. Uh, you know, you have to pay the bills. You have to keep the lights on. And so uh, probably what I will be focusing on a lot is the fact that you need a lot of creative people surrounding you. You cannot be successful on just your own. Uh, you know, there are a few people who can write it, direct it, shoot it, cut it, you know, but there are only so many Ken Burns out there. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, it's a creative process where you have to have everyone kind of on the same page and kind of be a leader uh, to those, those people. Uh, we're kind of those folks in Oklahoma, we get calls, uh, we get scripts from Hollywood almost weekly. There's a lot of interest, you know, as it relates to that. So people see us as kind of a, a go-between. They, they talk to the Film Commission in Oklahoma City, they talk to the Film Commission in Tulsa. Uh, they want to know where are we, where can we, you know, get something done? What's the best location? Where do we find the best crew? Uh, so I will tell people that uh, it, it, it's, a, it's not only a great time and an exciting time to figure out uh, what's going on in Oklahoma as it relates to film, but also, uh, you know, the building blocks of any business. You know, be kind to people, you know, get to, get to know what it is that you want to do. Put together a long-term strategy, not just something where it's one and done. You know, uh, you can do a movie, you can get the funding, but the biggest question we have for filmmakers at Sundance is, you've had success here, well, great, what's your next film? Mm -hmm. And so that's the question that I would have probably for any filmmaker in any film production company. Mm -hmm. Always so. kind of keeping your eye <clears throat> down the field, like, a, like in most sports, football for one, but always being ready for the different opportunities to come your way, but also getting yourself out there. And you, um, your, your, your team, you guys do a great job. I mean, you've been at Sundance every year. I've been there um, and you're in, you know, having those meetings and talking up Oklahoma and, um, and finding those good connections. Um, and so it's, it's important to be out there and promoting what we're doing back here. A matter of fact, one of our films that just came into the queue, I met the director at my very first Sundance. He had his wife with him and we kind of hit it off. And he was looking to take this film to Texas where it was set. And she was like, what about the Oklahoma people? They sure were nice. Indeed. So it's very important. We love, um, you know, having all of our Okies there to, to help us um, brand Oklahoma as a, a cool destination spot to do business. I mean, they are, they're coming and they're investing um, their, their dollars into our people and, and resources here, so. But I mean, that's really, really the way, you. that's really the way we see it, mm -hmm. uh, is that film in Oklahoma, film and music, because there's a marriage there, uh, is really economic development. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have better statistics, Tava, than I probably do, but we know that whenever we bring, uh, let's say that it's a $5 million film that's going to live in Tulsa or Oklahoma City or Guthrie or wherever it happens to be for a period of time, uh, there, are, there are analytics that show that a large portion of that stays 
right there in that community. And to us as a production company, that's really important. Uh, as executive producers, we're involved in the mechanics with raising money uh, for film. As a producer, you're involved with the mechanics of overseeing it from basically the birth to distribution. Uh, and just in the raw numbers as far as care and quite frankly, community, it's important that we figure out ways that we keep people, whether they're from Australia, Great Britain, Hollywood, Georgia, wherever, that they keep coming here. Mm -hmm. It's very competitive in the United States right now. And uh, you know there are uh, states like Oklahoma that are absolutely figuring it out that the more people that you can get to come here and set up essentially a cottage industry of music and film, that's what drives uh, this, uh, this industry. And quite frankly, it comes back to what you said, Dave, about watching that footage uh, mm -hmm. you know, from one of your videos. It's beautiful. And so people are seeing these images and postcards mm -hmm. you know, from, from the movie that's popular right now. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great commercial for Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's kind of the way that we look at it. And so every project that we're involved in, you know, they're small budgets in Hollywood terms. I mean, $5 million, it's, it's a lot of money, but in Hollywood terms, it's really not. So what can we do to maximize marketing uh, for the state and each community that we're in so that we can blast out there uh, the beautiful image that exists here? Mm -hmm. Well said. Well said. Awesome. Real fast, Russ, on your company, yeah. uh, KKP, KKP dot film is the website there. When you go there, the first thing it says is heart of the story. What does that mean? Heart of the story is important. Uh, without question, there it is on the screen, mm -hmm. without question I think it's important to recognize uh, the emotive uh, components of really any story. Um, I come from a news background and so I think sometimes, as you're familiar Dave, uh, you know, whenever we cover different piece of, uh, p uh, events, you know, the teacher strike or, or a plane crash or, uh, a, you know, uh, issues that really are traumatic, we have a tendency to put it and package it in such a way where it's more concise. With documentary film and with fiction film, we have the opportunity to interweave a really important story and maybe we have a little more artistic license and time, sure. quite frankly, yep. uh, to be able to tell that story. So. Uh, understanding the basics of a story. You know, do we want to follow a Hollywood trope because we want it to be a Hollywood movie? Uh, are we really interested in it being completely formulaic so that we can have a tentpole like the Avengers that's going to keep paying and paying and pay? Or do we want to do something that really goes artistic in a way uh, that a small group of people will understand it, but a broader audience will not? So I think to your question, it's important that we identify the story up front, and quite frankly, we determine where that story is going to live, because all of those points determine how that story is going to be told. But again, I think, uh, I, I guess just as a, a basic, you know, I didn't go to film school. I'm not sure you have to go to film school to be a, a filmmaker. I'm not sure you have to go to music school to be a musician. Uh, but uh, I, I, I would probably say that understanding uh, emotion, understanding story arc, uh, those are the components that make a great story. What you see on the uh, website there uh, is as we were going through the redesign of that website, uh, our folk, folks told us, they, they said, just find some clips that really show some emotion. And so that's what we have tried to do with some of the clips there so that in a uh, way without sound, you can see and hear, or at least see, uh, kind of the emotion that goes on with that. So that's kind of a long way of answering your question that it comes down to emotion and connection. Kirkpatrick mm -hmm. and Kinslow Productions is uh, the name of the group. KKP.film is the website, film, nonprofit, and corporate. Uh, of the various genres among those that they produce. Uh, Blake, something I heard there from Russ, uh, he mentioned um, you can go out, be solo guy and be successful, but ultimately you're gonna have better success perhaps in a group. Do you find the same way when you're writing music or producing music that, yeah, you could write a song, but when you collaborate among your group, whether that's uh, the guys in Stillwind or or something like the Gypsy Cafe where the chocolate and the peanut butter collide together, <laughs> that bigger things happen. Yeah, 100%. So 
Collaboration is a beautiful thing. It's like kind of having all the ingredients to make this beautiful cake. So you can't really just make a cake with flour. You have to have everything come together. So um, as far as it goes with Steel Wind, Michael and I, we've been writing songs together since 2009. And him and I work really well together to where um, it just kind of produces something that like if one of us tried to do it wouldn't be the same if it was just you know us two writing together and now we're working on this third album where we're bringing the advice from our band members saying hey what do you guys think about this so we kind of bring the song to them and get their advice and and really have a collaborative discussion on how to make it better and better so yeah it definitely is a a group effort (laughs) very good you can find more at stillwindmusic.com Uh, We mentioned he'll be at the Gypsy Cafe this week. Uh, But beyond that, where can we find some more Still Wind? So on May 18th, we're playing at the OSU Botanic Gardens. And that will be a nice outdoor, family-friendly, beautiful weather, hopefully. Um, (laughs) And then we are also playing in Oklahoma City at the new McClintock Saloon in the Stockyard City. Um, And so that that will be... That's a perfect venue for you guys. Yeah, really very Mm -hmm. good fit. So um, we're looking forward to that as well. And then um, coming in October, um, Steel Wind is opening up for Steel Drivers. The Steel Drivers are playing at the Tower Theater cool. in October, so make sure you get your tickets. They're going fast. They're going fast. Good stuff. Tava, you have a red hat in front of us. Uh, we should mention that there's a party in our future. Yes, there is a party. And before we get to is that that's on May 19th, the Dead Center um, supposed to, I think they named it the best party ever, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I wonder who named it that. Um, I, can th- I can think of any number of suspects that could be involved in that. <laughs> there are a few other um, okay. cool uh, events coming up. So I wore my Twister Alley. So this is the yep. Twister Alley uh, Film Festival that happens this weekend up in Woodward, Oklahoma. Yep. We spoke with those guys so last year. We don't want any, yeah, they were here with us last year. Mm-hmm. We don't want any tornadoes happening. Talk about like all the perfect ingredients. We don't want all mm-hmm. the perfect ingredients nope. for that to happen. <laughs> May 3rd through the 5th, the Twister Alley Film Festival. Yes, so Twister Alley is coming. Um, Also this weekend is the Green Country Jam in Tulsa. So that's that's at the Raceway uh, track, which is, this is year one. And Rascal Flats, um, which there's obviously uh, Joe Don Rooney, a third of the Rascal Flats is an Oklahoman himself. Rascal Flats will be there. There's a great lineup for the Green Country Jam, a pure country festival uh, in the green country. And then we also have, well, Hop Jam is down the road a little bit on May 20th, which is also in Tulsa. Uh, what else? Oh, I wanted to mention the, uh, the new Wild Noise music. Uh, it's a local uh, musician concert series at the Oklahoma City Zoo. So it's every Friday night in May. So it starts this Friday. And um, it's Kyle Reed and um, some great, you know, some of our great locals here. Um, so that'll be exciting. Might be, um, might be a fun thing to get the, get, have a date night and go out to the, to the zoo with the wild animals. And what else? We talked about Gypsy. Obviously we're proud sponsors of a lot of these that we've, that we've talked about, um, including the Gypsy Cafe tomorrow. And then what else? Oh, so Dead Center Film Festival. So the, the, the best party ever is May 19th. <laughs> um, it is a ticketed event, so partially sort of a fundraiser, continuing fundraiser for the festival. Um, but if you do get your bat, your you know film pass, which they're 50% off right now, and I'm not sure if we've announced that by the time this comes out, but it's happening right now this week, is for anyone that is already registered as a, an industry member in our production directory on our website, they get 50% off their Dead Center Pass. Cool. Um, and so if you, um, so just check out more information about the Dead Center, the party, and then the festival's coming around the corner um, in June, downtown Oklahoma City. So I think we've covered most, we've got Made in Oklahoma, that's in June. Um, I think we've covered most of the events. Super excited about next Tuesday, again, May 8th, and I just wanted to also mention that is our office, um, our office's hosted event. Um, we do, it's a mentoring and networking music, uh, sorry, networking and mentoring series, and we alternate. In the spring, we do film focused, and in the fall, we do music focused, and that is just pure good networking and, of course, mentoring, hearing, getting great advice and wisdom and, and hearing from experienced people like um, Russ, but joining him will be Ryan Belgart, who owns Boiling Point Media, and then um, Kyle Roberts, who owns Reckless Abandonment. Um, I'll be moderating. Um, and you, it's going to be great. We have um, a great turnout already. It is a free event um, down at the Paramount on Film Row. So 
come on out and um, be some good food uh, catered by um, Midway Deli down in Norman, who's very interested in getting more into the film business. So he's coming up to bring some food, and uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good time. We're excited. I if if I were going to start a company, or just be curious about the film industry, I would want to be there. So it's going to be exciting. It's good stuff, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time. Russ Kirkpatrick over here. KKP.film is his website. Blake Parks over here. Stillwindmusic.com for more information on his musical <coughs> ability. Uh, perhaps there needs to be a clip of some combat ping pong on this <laughs> website. I want to join. That actually sounds really fun. Okay, I so love ping pong. Next time we've got four people, we'll do it. And we'll That's do right. it on <laughs> I, and I'll bring the net at, okay. because I have the kind, we need a little bit bigger table though that you can hook on to your existing table. It's all coming together. Peter. And yeah. I'll bring my helmet. And my <laughs> yeah, right. Goggles. Goggles, yeah. <laughs> Any Anything else that you guys wanted to, to say? I, I would just say anyone interested in being in the film industry again this is your time in Oklahoma it is a fabulous fabulous uh, time uh, to be interested to be involved uh, all you have to do is just show up it's just that unique uh, industry that unique career choice that you can make and uh, you can make an impact uh, it just takes a lot of hard work a lot of tenacity and a lot of focus so just a lot do it. of grit mm -hmm. Yeah, and as far as the film industry goes, what I love about Oklahoma is the diverse terrain. So, mm -hmm. we, you know, Oklahoma is unique in that we have so many different geographical terrains to where they can do a lot w with one film in one area. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Um, and then as far as music goes, if anybody wants to help Oklahoma musicians, um, you can go to reddirtreliefund.org. Got a couple well-spoken gentlemen here. Yeah, in addition to being love talented. it, love good it. Stuff. Table, always good to catch up with you. Likewise, we'll do it again next month. All right. Thank you, Dave. Thanks. Thank Appreciate you. it, guys. Thank you guys.